And now... It's the Still Unnamed Podcast. With your host, Petey Salas. Hey kids, and welcome back to another exciting edition of the Still Unnamed Podcast. I'm Petey Salas. I'm flying solo here today. I want to thank any new listeners and new followers, new viewers that have, uh, you know, followed us from last week's episode with Raymond. I know that I gained a bunch of, uh, a bunch of new listeners thanks to him and uh and his fan base and him sharing it and promoting it and it's exactly my diabolical plan worked perfectly because all he had to do was share it and uh we picked up uh we picked up a fairly good amount of, of new listeners and i'm very excited and i'm very thankful for raymond for that for helping us out and we ended up having a, a pretty you know pretty interesting and, and funny conversation so again if you came back this week after listening to last week's i genuinely appreciate it and thank you for listening on the show today, I felt like going a little bit youthful. Um, I've been feeling, uh, I am 32 years old, uh, for those of you who, who've been wondering, or you know, you may know that already, 32 years old, I will be 33 this year, and I'm feeling every single bit of that, if not more, lately. I've uh, <laughs> just, I've always had this old man complex where I've felt a lot older than I am, and I'm kind of a, you know, a, a cranky kind of a person and that's just that's just my style that's the way I've been for years and you know if, I mean I'll, I'm a, I'm an old soul I guess <laughs> I've got the personality of a you know 70 year old man I've always felt older than I am so I tend to like absorb some energy from people that are that have this youthful exuberance and youthful spirit but the only problem with that there's a downside to that which is uh, I, I I hate young people <laughs> I really do not like the the attitude and the the personality of, of today's teenagers and and early early twenty ish people. Um, I just I can't I can't bring myself to have full conversations with them. They just annoy the shit out of me. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, I mean uh, maybe some of you feel the same way. Like I can't go to the mall. I cannot walk into the mall anymore. First of all. I've always hated the mall. Okay, I'm really coming off kind of like an asshole here, but the truth is I've always hated the mall. I used to go in and out. I knew which store, I knew which entrance of the mall I had to get go through in order to get to where I wanted to go. If I was there for toys, I would go in through Sears. I'm talking about my mall, which is down here. It's called the Plaza Mall. If I wanted to go to, you know, KB Toys, I would go through Sears go through the, the, the back entrance way of Sears by the warehouse, just hang a quick left, and there I was with the toys. If I wanted to go to uh, GameStop or, or a video game store, I would go through JCPenney. Again, go through those back bay doors by the layaway department, and there I was. I hate crowds. I hate malls. And, and not to mention that the last time I went to the mall was probably about a year ago. My mall has changed dramatically since I remember going there on, on the regular basis. It's just, don't even get me started on the food court. It is ridiculous. But that's not what we're here to talk about. I'm here to talk about how I stay in touch with what is, uh, you know, new and fresh by having a couple of young friends, a couple of young ladies that I work with, and uh, they, they tend to ground me in, in reality and, and try and keep me young and youthful. And, and today on the show, I have one of them here with me. Her name's Crystal. She started off as my intern. And as time went on, you know, she won over the hearts of all of the, the people there and the bosses with her bubbly and cheerful attitude. And, and she's now a full-time employee running, running the marketing branch out of, uh, out of Harlingen. So she's probably my youngest friend. Um, so one conversation with her, and it, it kind of like rejuvenates my my youthfulness, I guess. And it, it kind of reminds me, like, look, dude, you're not seventy, okay? You're you're in your thirties, early thirties, mind you. And uh, stop being such a fucking curmudgeon. Google that word, see if it doesn't, you know, perfectly describe your hero here. But anyway, I got Crystal on the show. I just wanted to have a, a quick conversation with her and just kind of introduce you all to her. And this is the the type of uh, bubbly and cheerful person that I that I work with, and it, at times it's annoying. It is. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's too much. It's like too too happy, Hello Kitty, dimply, smiley face thing, and it just it's you know. And some days I just hate the world. And it's a nice polar opposite 
attitude sometimes when we meet up at work. And But by the end of the day, she's got me laughing and stuff. So we'll get to her in just a minute. Um, since we're, we're keeping with the youthful trend, I'm going to actually invite my, uh, my son, my baby boy, on to the show in just a minute. He's our resident uh, wrestling expert. And uh, he's going to talk about uh, something that, uh, actually a tragedy that just happened over the weekend. Um, In case you guys hadn't heard, there was a uh, very, very bizarre freak accident uh, death that happened in the wrestling world. And uh, it happened live in uh, Tijuana, Mexico, involving actually a a very, very big wrestling superstar that probably many of you have heard of, Rey Mysterio. No, he is not the one that died, but he was involved in the accident. So I'm going to have Quentin on here for just a minute to uh, give us his take on on what happened. And uh, let's get to that actually right now. Hey, buddy. Hey. So uh, something happened over the weekend, right, that you wanted to talk about? First of all, this is Quentin Cash. This is our TSUP wrestling expert, Quentin Cash. So thank you for being on the show. Okay. So uh, let's talk about what happened. What what happened in that video? Um, in a wrestling company... Um, they had a match with like I think four guys, mm-hmm. and then Rey Mysterio was in it. I don't know the other two guys. Um, and and the the guy who ended up dying was Pedro Aguayo Jr. Yeah. And then. <laughs> and then Rey Mysterio first got him, first Hurricane rotted him out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Hurricane Rana, for those of you who don't know, is is when uh, one wrestler kind of grabs the other guy by his neck using yeah, his legs and. Then, and Flips and him flips over. him out, or flips him over, flips so, him out of the ring. So he did Hurricane Rada out of the ring, and when I saw on that video, um, Pedro, he got his head, I saw his head, like, go down to his, to his neck, when mm-hmm. he, when his neck went down, like, when it, when it hit the, uh, the side of the ring. The apron? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the apron. And then when he got in, I saw him, he was like... Oh, oh, and he was patting his neck because, and he got in a little bit kind of slow. And then Rey Mysterio um, drop kicked him in the back of the head, I mm-hmm. think. And then. He was setting up the 619. Yeah, he was setting up the 619. He, he, soup, he, um, drop kicked, kicked him, him mm-hmm. in the neck. Then I saw Pedro's, um, neck go like, it went to his back. Right. And then it went to his front. Right. It, then, it was almost like whiplash. It yeah. Went like, and then boom. Mm-hmm. And then when Pedro's like neck hit the ropes, he was just like out. He he was passed out because I saw him go like all the way to down his chest. Right. And Rey Mysterio was go. He put his hand up to do the six one nine. Right. And then he went back to the ropes and then got the ropes and then he tried to do the six one nine, but the guy. Pedro's head was supposed to like stand up to, to so that he so could Rey, get yeah, yeah so Rey Mysterio could kick him in the face um but Pedro was like dead and and when Rey Mysterio missed it and he was like what he's supposed to he's supposed to stand up and then um Rey Mysterio was like oh my gosh I killed him and then um like cause usually rest when when Rey Mysterio tries to do the 609 mm-hmm. and and people, the wrestlers are on hanging on the ropes mm-hmm. and they have to put their head up to to, to so take Rey, the so take Rey the shot to yeah. dial it up and <laughs> okay. so mm-hmm. so we could do it and right. then but Pedro's head didn't come up so so he knew something was wrong yeah yeah um yeah it was a very it was a very sad situation that that happened um and when they put him in the stretcher uh-huh and then his like face his face with no it hair lost on all it, color it, right it lost his color and right. he was like turning gray he gray, was blackish yeah. gray i mean it was it was a it was a scary and sad situation that did happen um the thing that that's so bizarre to me is that like if you look at the footage like it doesn't look it wasn't it wasn't a violent very violent and hard kick like ray's been doing that move for years now yeah, for like years. 15 years he's been doing that exact same move Even the exact he, same way yeah. and when when he did it it was just it was just a freak accident you know he's yeah. the i think that the guy hurt himself 
when he fell out of the ring, like you were saying, and he was already had a broken neck, but he still rolled back into the ring. Because he rolled back in right. very, very slow. Right, and then Ray didn't know that, so when Ray did the drop kick to the back, I think that's what actually just snapped the guy's neck. Yeah. And he just hung on the ropes like that for a while. And, and then his, like... His announcer or something like that. He was saying, Pedro, Pedro, get up, get right. up. It was very sad. It was very scary. Well, how did that make you feel to see that? You actually saw someone die right in front of you. Not, in, I mean, you weren't there, but you saw the footage of someone yeah. actually dead. It made me feel a lot, lot sad, but mm -hmm. I don't know how Pedro's family feels right now. Yeah, I imagine they're very sad. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just proof, you know, that, like, you like to do a bunch of wrestling moves and stuff, and you like to jump around on your bed, and at school, you sometimes play with your friends and stuff, but uh, that's just proof that maybe you shouldn't be doing that, you know, you shouldn't do that stuff at home because you're not a professional, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just a reminder, man, that, you know, things are, this is real, and, and people really get hurt, and now proof people actually die from this, and it's uh, it's very sad, so... For those of you, you know, who have kids or, or you yourself like to wrestle around and, you know, play wrestling in the backyard and stuff, be careful. It's true. Don't try that at home unless you're a professional. Especially if you have a trampoline. Right. Trampolines are dangerous. So, real quick, let's change gears and let's talk about uh, WrestleMania. It's coming up next week. So, let's let's talk about the top three matches that are happening at WrestleMania. Okay. okay. And I would say the top three matches are, um, first of all, the Stinger, Stinger has finally shown up at... at is finally it, doing his first WrestleMania, I right. think, at... Um, and he's facing and he, Triple H. Triple H at WrestleMania. That should be a that should be a good one. Yeah, and when, when they first announced that, the crowd was like... They're just like... It was a, it was a huge shocker. Mm-hmm. So who do you think is going to win that one? I go with the Stinger. Yeah? Yeah. So do I. I think Sting's going to take this one. It's his first WrestleMania. He's been, he's the vigilante. He's going up against, uh, you know, the authority. And, and I think that he's going to take this one for his first WrestleMania. And he's been doing the Stinger splash and everything. Right. Another huge match that is happening is for the U.S. title, Rusev takes on John Cena. What do you think about that one? John Cena. John Cena all the way? Why? Why do you like John Cena so much? Because, like, he won almost, like, every title in the whole WWE universe. Because he won the World Heavyweight, the Intercontinental, the U.S., mm -hmm. and... Um, so he, he's WWE just an all-around awesome every, wrestler. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Now here we are at the main event, which is... The challenger, Roman Reigns, Reigns takes, on takes on Brock Lesnar for the WWE, for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. Yes. Who's going to take that one? Uh, I go with um, Roman Reigns. Do you think Roman Reigns is going to win that one? Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's a super Brock Lesnar is a beast. I know, but I have a feeling in my heart that he's gonna, that Brock is gonna take it, but take it back. But I still go with Roman Reigns. I, I, I can't see that happening. I think Brock Lesnar has held on to that title for almost a year. And every time someone tries to challenge him, no one can take it away from him. He is a giant mountain of a man. He is a beast. He's mean. He's tough. I think that that pretty boy, Samoan Roman Reigns, He's going to get his ass kicked. That's just my opinion. But hey, that's why we're making a bet for WrestleMania. We've got a dollar riding on it, right? I think so. Only if I have a dollar. You have a dollar. I know you have a dollar. I'm going to spend it on ice cream. <laughs> well, anyway, that was a recap of WrestleMania. It's happening next week. Um, maybe the next time you guys uh, hear from us, we will have already seen WrestleMania and we can see how our predictions went. Thank you very much for being on here. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I haven't done a podcast in like uh, a year. It hasn't been a year. It's been it's been a while since you've been on. But thank you for being back on, and thank you for informing us and giving us your opinion on uh, on the tragedy that happened in Mexico over the weekend. It was very sad, yeah. and um, you know. 
my condolences, our condolences to the Aguayo family, and, uh, you know, may, may he rest in peace. Yeah. Thanks, Tin. Well, that was my baby boy there. That was Quentin with his take on uh, on what happened in the ring this past weekend. And a uh, very sad, very, very sad situation. But shit happens. It really does. And you get into this business knowing that, I suppose. And they were all professionals and they were all doing what they were trained to do. And it just, it's an accident. It's the same as, uh, you know, something that happened at a circus or at a, you know, Cirque du Soleil type of thing or motocross or boxing or a- any real live uh, live event live entertainment slash sporting event you know these these type of things happen and it, it hadn't happened in a wrestling ring um in quite some time actually so it's never a good time for it to happen but it's just kind of one of those reminders that you know life is precious and uh at least he went out doing what he loved so rest in peace um uh, better Ohio jr so switching gears here Let's have a nice, friendly, bubbly, energetic, youthful conversation with my friend Crystal. Here we go. Yeah, so he had a <clears throat> he had a, a radio show years ago. And it was called the Glika Morning Show on Kipasa. I want to remember it. I was probably in middle school. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it makes me feel so old. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I produced that show, so. Really? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. What? I had no idea. That's okay. I mean, that's when I worked there at the station. I was producing, you know, radio shows and mm-hmm. doing drops and voices and stuff for them and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So... How you doing? Good. <laughs> Hi. Stop being creepy. Can you? <laughs> uh, okay. This is a good place to start, actually. This is this is where I, I was envisioning us starting, where um, not too long ago, you and, and another uh, another lovely young lady named Amy were <laughs> going back and forth uh, <laughs> right in front of me, debating whether or not that I'm a sociopath. <laughs> and Google was... a. Uh, Google corrected us. Yeah, that's true. Google, <laughs> you, you looked that. it up on Google, yeah. right? And and based on the answers or based on the warning signs of what a true sociopath is, I'm proud to, to say that I'm not a sociopath. <laughs> However, <laughs> let's not let's not go there. <laughs> based on <laughs> based on the guidelines of what a clinical sociopath is, um, you happen to be one. <laughs> So I am not. That's cool. Google's wrong. Google's wrong. Wrong. Google's never wrong. Google is wrong. Neither is not. Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm not a sociopath. Like that is the rudest, or most horrible thing anyone has ever said about me. Well, I hey. And now you're saying it like I on didn't the say air. it. I hey, I'm trying to defend myself. You and Amy were going back and forth trying to figure out whether I was a sociopath or was I just creepy. <laughs> And where You're did, very creepy, though. Where, like, did, where do we land you, on? I'm I'm creepy, but in a charming way. Yeah, like okay. I just want to hug you. I like that. I like. I'll take that. <laughs> I believe Amy said he's he's intense and he is kind of mysterious. Well, Amy actually said she wanted to take you home. Right, she did say <laughs> that. She said he's creepy, but the kind of creepy you want to bring into your house. Yeah. Whatever that means. I don't know. Well, I mean, I can't be that fucking creepy. You followed me back to the, the lair here, back to the <laughs> studio. I've just known you long enough to right. know that you, you won't do anything to me. I'm no threat. <laughs> I'm not a threat but whatsoever. you are kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> See, you say that, but you make it look sound at, look good. Look at the picture from earlier, the one that Ben took of us. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, well, I look creepy too, but I mean, you look We were bigger. testing out the lights today. <laughs> And uh, this new backdrop that we got. So we were just standing there, and Ben was taking pictures just randomly. Ben's our photographer. For and he photographer. happened to he happened to have gotten a shot, mm-hmm. a candid shot, where <laughs> you were standing in, in, at the first mark, and I was standing in the second mark, uh-huh. and I was kind of leering at you, sort of, kind of staring. But we were both staring at into like right nothing. I think it looked like the cover of an '80s you know band. I'm from the 90s, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, just look around you. There's plenty of them on the wall. Okay, let me see. Which yeah. one do we look like? Mm. There, I mean, there was definitely like some sort of a, you're the lead singer and I'm like the guitarist or whatever, and, and we're just 
I don't know. It, it just reminded me of that. But anyway, in case you guys haven't uh, figured it out, this is Crystal. Say hi, Crystal. Hi. Crystal was my intern many years ago, and now Crystal has, has moved up the ranks, and she's, uh, she's, she's, I think she's, are you my boss? I don't know. <laughs> I think you've become I mean, my boss <laughs> in the last year somehow. I don't know what I am. I didn't get the memo. Mm, me neither. They just told me to do more work, so. <laughs> right. No, but, but uh, we're, we're happy to have her here. Happy to have her with I'm us. I'm so excited. I've been begging you to be on the show forever. You have. You're, you're <laughs> I listened to all of your podcasts like in one day. That's all crazy. of them. I know. I don't understand how I did that, but they were so funny and they just made my day. <laughs> and I had to Snapchat you right away yes. and tell you that I loved them and that I wanted to be on the show. And I've been begging you to be on since then. Right. And then we never did it because something well, always came up. Something always came up. Uh, either it was my weekend with Quentin or you were off uh, in Austin or just, you know. Because I live in Austin. You, you, you. Yeah. <laughs> We were actually going to do it on the road to Austin oh, one time. No. We were going to take a road trip. We still have to do that, though. Yes, we do. We have to. We have to do that. You have the creepiest ideas ever. Do I? <laughs> okay, here we go. I see a trend. I see a trend going. <laughs> I'm just talking bad about you. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, it's cool what you want to do. So he wants to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please take a road trip to Austin. Right. Because my boyfriend lives in Austin. Right. So I'm going to tag along. Yes. And I'm going to drop you off mm -hmm. at a random spot by the expressway. You're going to find a hobo or a crack <laughs> whore or something that's just standing around there. You're going to uh -huh. follow them around for the whole weekend that I'm there. <laughs> okay. That was your plan. That's what you told me. No, and I, I was, said. I was concerned for you, Peter. <laughs> I said that I was going to live like a hobo, uh -huh. not a crack whore. <laughs> I was going to live like a hobo and just kind of like, you know, wander the streets of Austin for the whole weekend. I mean, you were going to go off and, and do Lies. whatever you're going to do. Wrong. Again. <laughs> you told me uh -huh. you wanted to find a crack whore. I wanted to in interview a crack whore. And follow her around and interview her and live with her. I was going <laughs> to live with her. And I, I was super concerned. I'm like, Peter, but it's cold. Like, where are you going to sleep? <laughs> I was very concerned. I was going to take my laptop and a microphone. They're going to steal it. They're hobos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was very concerned that they were I thought stuff you, you know what? I was looking for an adventure. And I asked you if you're gonna take your phone with you, like what if something happens and how am I gonna contact you? I think <laughs> I was very concerned actually. I wanted to get off the grid. I just wanted to disappear for a weekend. Well let's do it. Go have an adventure, not take my phone, maybe get some pods out of it, interview some interesting people and just kinda take this show on the road. That's kind of what I was thinking of doing. You're making it something. <laughs> first you, things first. You didn't tell me that. I'm going to find some crack. <laughs> do the crack. <laughs> that's what you told me. Okay. Well, well, that's how I took it. Well, I mean. Or I understood it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you misunderstood it. But that's okay. I'm sorry. And that's all right. So, so we have to do that. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll still do that. Mm -hmm. I think that still sounds like fun. It, it, it does. I see that. I see that. You have to party with us, though. Like, at least one day. You can go live like a hobo the rest of the time. <laughs> at least one night. I don't know if I'll fit in with your friends, though. Yes. Of course. Okay. Dude, you are like, <laughs> what, 10 years younger than me? So? Okay. I am not. See this finger? It's not on the pulse <laughs> of what is cool with 22 year old people. <laughs> So, I mean... I'm 23. I just turned 23. Oh, that's true. You just turned 23. Mm -hmm. That's true. Getting old. Mm. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I can't see anymore. Okay, what would what would be a typical night out? Drink and get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and not remember anything. And the next morning... Okay, I'm with you so far. Just trying to reminisce. <laughs> Wait, what's the word? I don't know big Rem words. Reminisce. <laughs> reminisce. Yeah. Trying to remember what you did the night before. Yes. Now, I know what I've, it means. I just know how to say it. Follow you on Snapchat, mm -hmm. and I see what your nights out look like. Okay. What do they look like to you, Peter? There's a lot of boom, 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 <laughs> Bunchies, boom. Bunchies. Exactly. <laughs> you dancing, your your boyfriend just standing behind you drinking, <laughs> and, and it just seems so loud and just so like, oh, I'd like, I just want to turn the music down on my phone. That's how, and imagine me being there live and in person. Well, have you lived it? Have I lived me? it? Have you been with, out with me? It's fun. My boyfriend just stands around, but mm -hmm. whatever. Like, you can dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you were, Let him stand around. You sounded like, like that girl from <laughs> that, that shit that Mexican girls say. Right? <laughs> I love that video. Baby, come dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that is hilarious. Um, well, you know what? I'm going to do it because, like I said, I, I'm, still, I'm still seeking that adventure. I, I have a new policy, which is um, never refuse an invitation. So if you invite me out to go party with you and the Austin kids, um, then I will, I will join. Yay. I think that Super sounds like fun. It sounds like a plan. I've, I've only Everyone been... heard it. So yes. if it doesn't happen the next two months, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to come back here and tell the world that you did not. You know, I've only been Austin like twice in my life. Yes. I love Austin. And one was like 15 years ago, and then the other one was like two years ago. I went to go see a concert. Uh Uh-huh. So that was... Who did you go see? I went and saw Kiss and Motley Crue in San Antonio. Two years ago? Yeah. Was that when you went with Sasa and Magali? Yes. Oh, I remember. I was an intern. Yes, you were. We left you in charge. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was good times. Yeah, I went to go see them in San Antonio, and uh, we took a little detour up to Austin and uh, it was it was very fun it was a it's a fun town I can see how it how it has that appeal to people to to draw them over there like it's awesome right and the thing the thing about Austin that the first thing that struck me was like just how much it reminded me of New York City and I love New York City I I've love it been, but you always talking about it and how I am and I've only been there once and that's the thing I've only been there once but I feel like I grew up there because, you know, me and movies and TV shows, like, mm-hmm. I, I retain a bunch of useless trivia and knowledge. So, like, <laughs> the one time I did go up there, I knew where to get to, how to get to places because I've seen them in movies and TV shows. That's crazy. And I wasn't lost. I was not lost in New York, believe it or not. It was, I, I get lost on my way to Westlaco. <laughs> <laughs> but put me, put me in New York, and I knew how to find places. I knew how to find pizza shops and whatever it is that we wanted to do. So, what? and that's what what Austin reminded me of. I, I truly, I felt like I was back there. It was just such a free and and vibrant city. Like the the city has a life, like a it it has it a does. heartbeat to it. it it's does. it's hard to explain. And at night, it's like the most beautiful place ever. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. We went to some restaurant on, um, I think it was Second Street. I don't know. I don't know where it was, but mm-hmm. it, it was just beautiful. Like lights everywhere. Like it's not Christmas time, or it wasn't Christmas time, but you know the Christmas lights. Right. Like it's just amazing like, how they decorate everything and how everyone's always out walking in the street. Right. Like, that is crazy to me. Like you don't see anyone walking exactly. here. Exactly. You don't. And just the freeness of it, like you said, it's it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I wish I lived over there. Like I really, really do. It's such a beautiful city, and it's it's a young city. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's for youngsters, and I am one, so, <laughs> so yeah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm getting out of that age where I can still be considered a youngster, I think. You're 30. I'm 32. You're 30. Okay, well, I still feel... <laughs> you I've, are young. You're not, like, an old, like, no, like, you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> and creepy. Yeah, that's cool. Like, you make it cool. <laughs> Not that creepiness is cool, but you make it cool. I make it work for me. You do. Thank you. It's kind of weird, but I love it. <laughs> is it the ice? Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> that always gets me. I know. You do. I freak you out a lot. You do. I do. I don't like it. What did you do today? You did two things to me today. What did... Don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What did you tell me? Something... Did you tell me I had my tire was blown out? No, that's CJ. No, CJ I didn't. always told me stupid stuff like that too. <laughs> but you told me something. Oh, that I misspelled Border Fest. Oh yes, yes. Well, I mean, I don't want to say you're gullible, but I get you a lot with these little <laughs> pranks that I pull. <laughs> Whenever you're doing like you, you do a lot of the artwork for our company. And we always get the proofs back, or once we get the final product, whether it's a T-shirt or a banner or something, you always fall for it. I say, I say it wrong. Like I say, who's Bert Hogan? <laughs> and you're like, you have to do the double take. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm like choking over here. I'm trying not to laugh. Um, yeah, that's mean. But you do always get me. Well, you you think you you. You would think it's that you would It's my baby. Like, my art is my baby. And then you're telling me that I did it wrong. Well, I didn't say you did it wrong. You're it's like, just, it's a Bert joke. Hogan, 
that like yeah that's wrong for something that's already printed and right. like ready to go tomorrow right that's horrible. that's one of my favorite things that's how that's how it you know what it's how i pick on my my little sister and oh. that's exactly like how i feel like i'm doing it all over again and i'm picking on my little sister and that's that makes me feel oh, happy i like that cool Yay. <laughs> but sister. then, you know, every once in a while, I'll give you the eyes. Stop. Okay, yeah, that's not little sisterish. <laughs> Very creepy. Yeah. <coughs> so what else is new? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing? You're boring now, right? I am. It's It sucks. Right. I'm 23 years old. My boyfriend lives in Austin. Mm-hmm. So I only see him twice a month, maybe. Sometimes three times a month if we're lucky. Okay. Um, we always have stuff going on. It's it's either work or whatever, and he al- he's always working. So it's hard. <sighs> oh, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Merp. Um, <laughs> it's hard to see each other. So when we can't go out, obviously we stay in mm-hmm. um, and watch movies or whatever through Skype. Like, technology. how does that work? It's it's kind of it's tough. Actually, I've heard about these me, Skype dates, but let me tell you how it works. Okay. So. Um, I have my iPad and mm-hmm. he has a laptop. So on my iPad, I download the Team Viewer app. Okay, and what does he that has mean? it on his computer too. It's just to share screen. So um, if oh, someone okay. has to remote into your computer or whatever, you. So you both are like, you see whatever's on I his see screen what or his, whatever. Yeah, okay. I see his screen. So all right. He has all these bootlegged movies. <laughs> <laughs> If you mean movies that he paid for to download legally? Yeah. Okay. And then? Yeah. He paid for them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> Anyways. So mm-hmm. we get, like, we see, like, these awesome, awesome movies, like, that aren't even, like, out yet. So, yeah. Anyways. Um, I see what's on, what's on his screen. So I have my iPad, and then we turn on Skype so I can hear his voice. Okay. And I can hear the audio from the laptop. Because on TeamView, you can't hear. You can only see. Okay. So we have Skype going, and we have the TV. I mean, you switch back to the Team Viewer, and I can see the movie on what's, whatever is playing. And then we'll just, like, maybe FaceTime, or we either turn off Skype, and we'll just be on FaceTime, or whatever it is, to see each other. So it's... It's a process. It's it kind sounds of, very it's, intense. It's very difficult. Yeah. Just to get like the feeling that the two of you are in the together, same room together yeah. watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Wow. Have you guys ever had like a Skype dinner date? I've yeah. seen that like on shows, no, but I've never, I've never seen never it done in that. person. Where like you, you, you know, you have your plate and sitting across yeah. from you is like a mm-hmm. tablet. <laughs> <laughs> you, know you know where I saw that on How I Met Your Mother? Okay. Um, she had like a pillow. <laughs> A marshmallow pillow. <laughs> like, that's what she called it. Okay. And it was a pillow. <laughs> Excuse me, a pillow with his favorite jersey. I don't know I don't know what his team favorite team was. His uh, favorite team's jersey on it. And then the head would be the tablet and you could see his head. And wow. they would, like, whatever, have conversations or eat dinner or whatever. I mean, long distance, long distance relationships in general have always been, you know, one of those negative things that, that there's always so much negativity put on them. But it's definitely easier now than it was a few years ago. Yeah, because of all the technology and stuff. Right. And I'm not even that far away. Like, it's just four hours. Right. So. I mean, when I was, like, right out of high school, uh, I was, I think it was my first year of college, I had a long distance girlfriend and she lived in san antonio and we don't all we had was the phone that's that's it we just had the phone not even texting you were or anything. in high school i was in, i was just out of high school so it was okay. like 2000 so you had a car uh yes i had a car okay but i did not go up there often because i did not have money <laughs> to okay. put gas in my car <laughs> and just different shit like that <laughs> there was a lot of things uh-huh. so all i had all i had was was my you know my telephone and that was hard. That was really hard, you know. But nowadays, I, I, I just wonder, had that relation, would that relationship have survived if I had Skype and FaceTime and all that stuff? Did you stuff? really like her? Yeah, I liked her. How'd you meet her? I met her in high school. And she moved to San Antonio? She, she went to college. San Antonio for college. Okay. And, but we didn't, we didn't get together till after high school. So it was like the summer after high school. Uh-huh. We actually got together. Uh-huh. And, um, you know... 
we lasted the summer together and then she moved away to San Antonio. So it became a long distance relationship, but you know, obviously it did not work out. (laughs) Obviously. Obviously. The one time I did go up to see her, I took my dad with me, um, and, you know, he was going to go off and go do stuff in San Antonio while I hung out with her. And uh, we got into a car accident on the way up there. Can you believe that? What? That was, if that wasn't an omen. Oh, my God. Then I don't know what is, but. That is yeah. horrible. I was driving. Were you all okay, though? Yeah, we were okay. Did I mean, you come back? Like, you didn't even go to make it to San Antonio? No, we made it because we were, like, the third car in a three-car accident. So... We got hit from behind, and the person behind us got hit from behind, and it was just like I I quickly pulled off the the expressway and I hit one of the rails, so I kind of damaged the front end and the the back of my truck had a big dent in it. But we made it to San Antonio either way. <laughs> I was not nothing was going to stop, stop you. Nothing was going to stop me from going to get some ass. <laughs> Peter, what? Stop! Oh, it. my dad knew. <laughs> I know. No, my virgin ears. <laughs> Your virgin ears. Shut up. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's not funny. I know. <laughs> but yeah, that's long distance relationships are, they're hard. They are. But I mean, we've been together for going on nine months now, so. Right. We've made it work. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. I'm happy. Good. I haven't been happy in a long time since we met. Yeah, I met you, and you were you were in a bad relationship that you you I, you were either barely getting out of or really trying hard to get out of. I was out of it already. Were you? Think, okay, I yeah, think. but you you weren't you weren't you weren't happy. I mean, you have this extremely cheerful disposition that like projects, and like you, no bullshit, you light up a room when you walk into yeah, it. Like seriously, too. like people are drawn to you and just you you have this energy and this youthful exuberance that like spreads. But in reality, like when you and I would have, you know, our, our quiet time and our, our conversations, because we've we been always, talking. We always have good conversations. Right. We've always had good conversations. Yeah. Um, I knew I knew the real what was really inside and, and I knew that you were not happy. So to see that you are happy now, that that makes me happy. Yay. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Relationships. <laughs> Moving yeah. on. Next subject. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, that that drew that blue and gold or whatever dress. Oh baby. yeah yeah yeah. I still want to talk about it because you creeped me out today. Okay. <laughs> it's like a week old. Whatever. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> what happened? Why do you see it white and gold? Like, I, there's still, is there still anything on the internet yet that says why? I'm sure that there's theories and stuff on why. I haven't really done that much, much research on it. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to after we, after we're done here, because now I want to know. And uh, I wish I could tell you guys now. But anyway, I initially did see it as white and gold. And to hear that people were even questioning that to me was insane. Mm-hmm. Just flat out insane. That is clearly I see white and gold. Blue and black. Right. Blue and black. But then I told you the story. Mm-hmm. Okay, my boyfriend sends it to me on a text message, and then we're trying to debate like what color he sees. He sees blue and white, and I, I mean blue and black, and I see blue and black as well. But we're trying to figure out why this is happening. Why people are seeing it white and gold. So we start googling stuff, and I come across uh, an article, and I see it white and gold, and I'm like, oh baby. I found it in white and gold and Mm -hmm. I screenshot it and I go back to my text message to send it to him and the dress that he sent me is white and gold has changed yes and I was like what the hell just happened like so strange am I going crazy like I felt like I was going crazy Mm -hmm. because I was looking at it and then I went back to google again and it was blue and black like the creepiest thing ever like why am I seeing it in both colors (laughs) Right. What and today I? I, I pulled up three pictures of the same dress and all that whoever uh-huh. had posted that had just changed, like, I guess the, the brightness of uh-huh. it, of the picture itself. And to me, the first two were white and gold. And They're the, all blue and black. The last one was blue and black. And you saw them Lies. all as blue and They're black. They're all blue and black. All and that, like, I, I didn't, 
I wanted to hit you. I just, I just wanted <laughs> I to. I know. I felt it. I, you just stopped talking about I it. You're like, I was like, you, you turned you're... around. You gave me your bag. You gave me your bag. You like turned around like you did well, you not were wrong. want to look in my face. No, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. Wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> bueno, bye. Bueno, bye con tu vida, güey. <laughs> That is fucking funny. But yeah, that was my blue and black and gold and white dress story. And we have to figure out why this happens. Well. Do I have better eyesight than you? Because I see it in both colors. No, you don't see it in both colors. You see it as all blue and black. I see it in both colors. No, I'm telling. No. The picture you're looking at, you cannot look at that picture. Because that picture is just shown. I mean, it's made to show you like the differences, right? So you have one end super bright which makes it white and gold. The darker end, which makes it blue and black. The middle is the original picture, and that's what you have to focus on, the original picture. I see the original picture in okay. both colors. I can go back and forth and just like, okay, I want to see it like white and gold, and I want to see it blue and black. Like, let me see. So you're making it up in your own head. I guess. Well, that's bullshit. It's not. Like, my eyes are like playing tricks with me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I oh, have yeah. no idea. Did you have fun? When? Today, right now. Oh, yes. Are we done? We're just about done. I'm, oh. I'm winding. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd click a button. So I'm like, oh, no, cool, no, no, cool. no, no. I'm, I'm checking. I was just checking the time on the on the oh. machine here. Damn. And I thought we were going to have anything to talk about. You see? It's just that this simple. Is easy. Oh, my God. Okay, let's Snapchat. Okay. Yay. Because I'm always on Snapchat. Right. Well, that's when my <laughs> other phone died like literally like it died you killed it with snapchat <laughs> i could not i could not unplug my phone because if i would unplug it <laughs> it would just die mm -hmm. my poor phone yeah oh. you you wrote it hard <laughs> pd needs a new phone i do i, I feel bad now because they they gave me a new phone before they gave yeah me a new phone. no I, I had been on the quote-unquote <laughs> waiting list since october and uh, she makes one phone call, and she's like, hey, my phone's dead. <laughs> and, oh, my God, he's tripping over himself to come bring you a brand new one. Yeah, I had it the next day. So maybe you can say you broke this one <laughs> and get a second one for me. I my old one. I don't want your old one. Why it doesn't you work. Want my old phone? It doesn't Why? keep charge. <laughs> but you have a Mophie. I do have a Mophie, and it works well. You see? You can just buy another Mophie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um see it was simple it was painless it was fun yes I loved now it. you will be part of the 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 archive of of still unnamed guests Yay! so that's cool so thank you very much for joining me you're welcome thank we just we thank you for having me right after finally right because it didn't just take one phone call to you <laughs> to get me on the show well i, I i'm not that easy <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're 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 a, you're fun as shit. And to, if I'm being fully honest with you, uh, I didn't like you at first. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you uh yeah you were. Why do you like me? Because you you annoyed me when when I first met you. Because you were just like I wasn't used to that kind of energy and that high pitched like like just like oh my god. <laughs> And then, like, I would try to, like, reason with you and talk to you about things. And then you were like, who's Van Halen? And I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. I don't like you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm into the punchies, punchies. Thing. You are. You're definitely into I that am. Norteño stuff. I love it. But I'm, too, I'm super Mexican. Mm hmm you, <laughs> you are. I am. You're super I'm Mexican. I'm proud of it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Me vale, vale, madre. Me vale todo. <laughs> Mexicana por vida. Yes. Okay. <laughs> A huevo. Well, I appreciate it. And just for the record, I like you very much right now. Thank you. So. I love you, Petey. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. <laughs> bueno, bye. Bueno, bye. You see what I mean? She's, uh, she's... She's so bubbly. There's no other word to to describe her, and, and almost to the point of like, like I said, like a, a annoying me. It's like, why are you so happy? You know, and like I shake my fist at her, and she just smiles at me, and it all just goes away. So, she's become a good friend in the last uh, in the last few years, the last year especially, and I was very happy to uh, to sit down. And she's a fan of the show, 
which is pretty cool because it's it's hard to it's hard to keep people's attention, especially someone so young and and has so many other things to to draw their attention away to walk into her office and hear my voice coming off of her phone. It's just it's bizarre and it's uh, flattering and it's just a it's it's a good feeling. So she wanted to do the show and now she did it and now she's a part of TSUP history. So thank you again, Crystal, for your time and uh, thanks for uh, brightening up this. Uh, this dark and dank TSUP network studios for a little bit. So thank you very much. Like I said, if you if you uh, followed us over here this week after last week's episode with Raymond, I, I truly appreciate it again. Thank you for continuing to listen. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being now being new members of the uh, the, the the listener base here at the Still Unnamed podcast. I know Mark and I are very grateful, and uh, actually we're going to have a special episode coming up next week. Episode twenty-eight will uh, will be a bit of a, a bit of a change in format. Not too much, but you'll see what I mean next week. So we're excited about that. Thank you all very much. I truly appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes, rate and review. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. We're pretty good. We've got uh, we're we've got twenty-seven episodes in the can, and uh, let's see where this little podcast that could ends up going. So. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Special thanks to our sponsor, Chico's Bail Bonds. And as always, have yourself a very happy, happy Taco Tuesday. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>